season. Undefeated. Uh, man, for all the people who doubted me, here we are now. And, uh, so I shouldn't be here, but, but I am. So. Welcome to Title 24, presented by NBC Sports. I am Ricky Carmichael. I am solo today. My co-host, Ryan Villapoto, was in the UK all last week. He is flying back home today. He was at the uh, VET MX of Nations. Uh, I thought he was supposed to race. He didn't race, but uh, I was following him along on um, social media, and uh, he had a good time. So uh, anyhow, he will be back next week. Um, before we get going, like always, we got to thank our fantastic sponsors, uh, Quadlock Case, United Motorsports, and Boxo USA. We appreciate you guys. Uh, a lot of excitement, and um, you know we wouldn't be here without you guys. So you are a huge part in the, of the success of Title 24. Hopefully everyone is enjoying it. We got a great show uh, today. Since RV isn't here, uh, I'm having to hold it down. But we got a special guest we'll have a little later on in the show, uh, Eli Tomac. Eli Tomac is going to join us, and uh, looking forward to that. So uh, that'll be uh, here shortly after we – do a little wrap up from uh, Iron Man, and uh, as expected, uh, we'll start with the two uh, fifties. You know, it was going to be a long shot for Justin Cooper for sure, and uh, it was interesting, cer certainly at the beginning. Uh, but Hunter, in the end, got it done. First moto, locking up his first uh, pro motocross championship. And uh, as you can see right here, you're watching a replay of that first moto of the new newly crowned two fifty MX champ. Hunter Lawrence taking it. There you go. His, his mechanics walking up to him. And of course, Johnny O'Mara. And, you know, it was a, it was a long fought battle. And I got to tell you, like just past halfway of this series, I thought he was on the ropes. And the reason that I say that he had some unfortunate luck, some DNFs. Well, the one um, at Redbud when he fell down in the first corner, that was obviously somewhat self-induced. He got a bad jump. And then when you do that, then he locked bars and went down. So that was one DNF. And then his uh, bike signed off at Southwick. So that was 50 points. And then at that time, then you had the rookie sensation, uh, Hayden Deegan coming up through the pack. So nevertheless, I'm like, oh man, this is going to get uh, dicey. And I didn't realize it until when was it? We were at the, uh, the last race that I did with, with, uh, with James or no, was it before Bud's Creek? Um, he was, he was injured. So, uh, and I didn't know that. So anyhow, he got healthy and, uh, he came out with a bang the last, uh, the last two rounds and really, uh, he, he performed at a level that he needed to at a crucial time. He was able to gain the points back and, uh, it was, it was, it was well-deserved certainly, but the rookie Hayden Deegan did well. And of course, Justin Cooper hung in there. Uh, the biggest thing that I would take away from um, there's two things that I'm taking away from the 250 class is that is um, Joe Shimoda. And I expected the rides that Joe had in Ironman that I, I expected that more often uh, this season in a pro motocross championship championship. And the reason that I thought that is because of going off of, of how well he did last year and how well he did and everything that he learned in that championship fight with, um, with, with Hunter. You know, I just I just expected him to uh, to do what to to do exactly what he did. Now I know he had an injury and he took a lot of time off, so maybe that was maybe that was part of it. But nevertheless, uh, he did a great job uh, the weekend sweep, and it was crazy because there was a lot of things uh, on the line. And I go like for Kawasaki, I think this what this was one this was one of the years that uh, he wasn't like. Kawasaki hadn't won a race in, in a year in like like 20 or 30 years. So uh, anyhow, uh, actually, and we go back to the starts on the 250. Think about seeing those uh, Monster Energy Pro Circuit bikes um, up front the last couple weeks. And uh, Mitch Payton said they found something uh, that helps the starts and overall. Did you find something on the motorcycles to get you guys up front? Um, I think the guys, that we found something probably about Southwick that is quite a bit better. So they've all got to ride it, they like it, and that's how we're running, seems to help. So it's definitely better on starts. Is that something you'll be able to use in the SMX playoffs or is it more outdoors only? No, it's something, it's just something we can use for everything. So it's, it's good. And uh, they'll take that uh, set up to SMX. So clearly Mitch and the boys and the crew over there have found a uh, performance gain. Um, and, and it speaks for itself, especially when they're getting uh, good starts like that. So. That was one of my big takeaways um, for, from Ironman on the 250. Hated seeing Cooper go down. 
Justin Cooper, that is, uh, on the first on the first corner. And here's a replay. He's up, um, he's up front. He's in front of Hunter. Hunter got a horrible start. You're going to see at the top of your screen right here, just kind of bottlenecks, and he gets caught up. What I believe happened there is if you watch it in slow motion, um, they go into that left-hander, and it's super ruddy. And the rut, the rut just like kind of grabbed him and spit him off. One of the riders, I couldn't tell from the replay, but it spit him off. And he actually went the opposite way as the corner, which is easy to do. The bike just stood up and, and, and he got spit off. So uh, I hated to see that for Justin, especially him being in front of Hunter. Um, the championship might have went down to, to the last moto. So um, hated to see that. Um, as far as the – as far as – um, Hunter goes, obviously with the, the pressure and, and everything that has went on this, this, this promoter cross championship season, I, like, I thought like there would, you know, I thought he would be a little bit better. The second moto, obviously doing what he had to do the first moto to lock it up that you can go see right there. He's, um, holding up that number one plate. You can see how, um, happy he is. I mean, when you're, when you're in that situation, you know, you just think of, you know, everything comes back to you, I believe, and all those moments and the journey to get there. I think probably that's maybe was going through his mind. I'm sure today he's been, um, he's been it's really set in for him. But uh, then the second mode, I'm like, oh, dude. And the reason that I think this is because this is how I was. And I shouldn't say just because how I was, this is how uh, everyone else should be. But I thought that he would dominate or at least run up front in that uh, second moto because of having that, uh, that, that pressure of the championship off of your shoulders. And it was one of those uh, motos that I thought he could go out and enjoy, right? Go out and enjoy, race for the lead, and not have to worry about anything other than your safety. And just, just go relish the moment. Go have fun and, and, and be you on the motorcycle. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, but I have no doubt he will be ready for the SMX playoffs here in a couple of weeks, uh, September 9th at Charlotte. So that'll be a lot of fun to, to watch. Um, shifting gears to the 450, no surprise. You know, I feel like the whole series, we tried building these narratives of why Jet Lawrence uh, would, would not go undefeated. But you just, you, you just when, when you take a step back and you look at the position he was in at the first two rounds when he was a true rookie, um, you know, he, he never, dude, he never, he never wavered. He answered the bell all the time. Um, Chase did well. So it was unfortunate to see Chase go down early in the season. I felt like, um, you know, Chase was only going to get better. And, and I think that Jet would have been challenged a bit more. Um, but nevertheless, that didn't, that didn't happen. Jet went out there. He did what he always does. Uh, he locked it up very special, especially to do, as a rookie um, would love to hear what he has to say about that. And what I, I want, I often wonder what his, what his biggest challenges were now that the championship is over. Um, it'll be fun to see. Um, it'll be fun to see that, but this is a, this is a great view. You can see the emotion. I mean, the guys won the championship and the only thing left was to go undefeated. This is after the second moto um, jet just right there clenching his hands, celebrating after the uh, undefeated season and how hard it is to do that, pounding his chest um, as he rolls off to the podium, you know, hugging everybody. It's so hard to do that when you think of everything that can go wrong. You're really defying the uh, uh, odds of physics or the laws of physics, I should say. Sorry. And uh, his talent is incredible. You may not like him, but you got to uh, you got to respect him. Uh, what he did against the the greatest guys in the world outside of Eli Tomac, super tough to do, and uh, it, it was it was cool to see that and the respect I believe that he got from his competitors. Um, it was a hard fought battle. Chase gave it his all. There's at times where Dylan uh, Ferrandez started to uh, show some show some hope. Uh, hated to see Dylan go down in the second moto. There uh, just uh, made a simple mistake. Um, they watered the track, and he was running that outside line. And as he did that, looked like the rear end started to step out, boom, cut back, and he high-sided and went over. And it, it stinks for, for Dylan because he doesn't have a ride next year. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I heard, um, you know, maybe there's possible um, opportunity for him to go to HEP Suzuki 
So we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. But I got a couple uh, questions that I want to answer uh, before we get to a special part of the show today. And I'm just going to rip off um, rip off a few a uh, few here. So uh, let's hear uh, D Weezy 119. Which race do you think Jet will lose first uh, in the playoffs? Well, uh, I think he has a high motivation for a couple things. Uh, he wants to, obviously you have to assume he wants to win the uh, SMX world championship. Um, so I'm not in the predicting business. Uh, I have no idea. I mean, I can tell you he's got a lot of momentum. I think, um, it, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how he is able to handle the pressure from say a guy like Ken rocks and a guy like, um, a Cooper Webb, uh, both guys, you know, that sat out majority of the most of the uh promoter cross championship so they're going to have some newfound uh motivation i would think so i don't know d wheezy we'll see uh we'll see what happens uh jacob underscore chin does ktm elevate chase or hold him back we talked about it on title 24 rv and i did last week and, and you know i think it's either going to be better or it's going to be worse uh i don't think the grass is always greener on the other side um, KTM's got a bunch of great guys over there. Uh, but nevertheless, I, I don't see it being any easier for Chase. That's for sure. Especially when you think of Tomac coming back, Cooper Webb, uh, being aboard that Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha team. I think the HRC team is going to be pretty tough. Um, I like what I'm seeing from Jason Anderson as well. So good question. Uh, we'll just, uh, we'll just have to wait, uh, and see Fowler's facts. Who wins? 2004 RC, 2008 Stu, 2013 RV, or 2023 Jet? Well, Clinton, you know I don't make predictions, and I'm not. I I think may I I certainly not me. And the reason that I say that is because uh, I'm not as talented and don't have as much bike skill as the other three guys. What would be fun? You know what I would love to do. I would love to watch 2008 Stu, 2013 RV, and 2023 Jet square off and me do the race call. That would be a lot of fun for me. So uh, I know I didn't give you the answer that you wanted because I don't make predictions. I give my analysis. Um, we appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Sharik Kubler. With all the talk about Jet's riding style technique, will we see others adopting it? Great question. We talked about that last week. Uh, on Title 24 also. I think I'm not a massive technique guy um, just because I wasn't taught that. I was taught to do what you got to do, ride how you got to ride to to win. And I feel that certain people are going to adopt that style. Uh, but I think a style like what Hayden Deegan has, completely opposite, goes full send, isn't, is, you know, isn't as precise, uh, but brings that intensity level uh, and can hang it out. I think there's, uh, there's something to be said for having that kind of style as well. So, uh, we'll have to see. I, like I said, I think some people are going to adopt that style, but, but not everyone. Jerry underscore seven, one, four. He, uh, this person asks, in your opinion, can jet continue the perfect season or will SMX be where it ends? Well, he has the, um, I think he has, the, he certainly has the talent to do it. He has the momentum on his side. Uh, I, I think it'll be a little bit harder for him. Um, just for the mere fact that I feel like it bring, being a hybrid track, there are guys coming into this, um, that, you know, have some extra motivation. The stakes are a bit, a bit higher. Um, I don't think like kind of what RV said, if you get a bad start coming from behind, it's going to be a little bit harder. So we'll see. I think it'll be tougher for him. Uh, I think uh, there's, you know, more moving parts in, in a hybrid track. I think the the level of, of getting it right is going to be harder. And I just think there's more things to that you have to be mindful of. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Good question, though. Corza 771. Thoughts on Hunter moving up to the 450 next year? He's going to be a a big surprise. Uh, I, I like, I've said this before already. I like Hunter Lawrence on a 450. I think his riding style suits the bike. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be great. I think the HRC Honda team is going to be stacked just like the Monster Energy Yamaha team. 
star racing Yamaha team that is. Uh, so we, we should see Cody Mecham 21. Do we think Hayden is going to use frustrations to pull off playoffs? I don't think he's going to use his frustrations to pull off the playoffs. But what I do think um, is I think that hybrid uh, style track is going to suit his riding style, uh, that faster tempo track um, with, with some uh, supercross, motocross sprinkled in both. Um, I think if you're a dude that is willing to take chances and you like that high pace and per where precision isn't always key, uh, I think it fits, it plays right into his hand. Um, with based on what we've saw all season long, with how well he did in Supercross, how well he did in Pro Motocross Championship, now the SMX playoffs, I think um, I think is this new light for him, and I think he's going to take that momentum, not frustration, and try to win this uh, SMX World Championship in the 250 the division. Uh, so great question. We appreciate all your questions. Like I said, with RV not being here. Um, and, and having a special guest with Eli, we're going to spend more time with, with Eli. So, uh, don't, don't have as many questions to, to knock out. Um, but before we get, um, to our, uh, special guest with Eli, let's go to the quad lock question of the week. And it kind of coincides with, uh, the SMX points. So we can get, uh, the SMX points up on the screen. Our quad lock question of the week is from Russ219. Russ219 asks, can you confirm the point system going into the playoffs? And Russ, here you go. So the points do reset. And on the right-hand side of your screen, there you go. These are the points going into playoff round number one in Charlotte in two weeks' time, September 29th. Chase Sexton leads the field with 25 points. Aaron Plessinger, 22 points. Jet Lawrence is in third. Cian Cerullo, fourth so on and so forth. So there you go. I like the reset right there. So that should uh, answer your question, Russ. We appreciate it. Make sure you slide into the DM um, on um, on Title 24. We will get you locked up with, uh, linked up with Quadlock. They'll send you some uh, um, product. I guarantee you, you will like that. Make sure when you get it, you send the post, tag, uh, tag Title 24, tag all of us and uh, we love seeing the uh, interaction. So to answer your question, um, I, I love how they're resetting it. It's going to be interesting um, to say the least. And uh, it's something that um, I, I go back to when the SMX was, um, when this concept was um, released and, and talked about last October at the LA Coliseum. And there was a lot of speculation about it. And it came at an interesting time, but it was something that I think now has a lot of value. But I don't know, and I don't think that we all knew just what it was going to amount to, say, even back in last October, even maybe January or February. But then I go to, say, halfway through the uh, Monster Energy Supercross season, and then you, you start seeing the points stack up. And you're like, hey this thing might be bigger than what we anticipated. And then as the Monster Energy Supercross series ends, then we go on to uh, the Pro Motocross Championship. Well, then you start seeing guys that were only doing Supercross only start coming in and race the Pro Motocross series uh, to make sure that they are in that top 30 seated in points, whether it's 250 or 450. And you're like, ah, okay. So now, now you can see the importance of it, wanting to be seated and be in that top 30 so you, so you make it to the playoffs. And you could see everything starting to materialize and see the importance of being there and what this SMX playoffs was going to be like outside of what, it, what it's going to bring from a TV uh, package standpoint and, and just what that does for our sport in general. And so uh, I think it's awesome. I think it's fantastic. Um, I'm excited for it. I think um, it was cool to see all the guys that uh, were just lingering around the top 30 to to come back and, and get those points, whether you're guys like Ken Roxon, whether you're guys like Cooper Webb at the beginning of the series or the guys closer to the bubble. You can see that that system is working. And quite frankly, you know, there was a lot of negativity around it uh, from some of the keyboard warriors, and I hated that. And, and now everyone, you know, majority of the people is, is talking about it. And I think if you look at it from a positive light, 
the it, it's working. Are there things that might need to be changed? Of course there are. Things take time, but it, there's no denying that a playoff system works better uh, in all facets of sports. I think it works great, even in NASCAR. I mean, I was at Daytona International Speedway this week for the regular se last regular season, and there are so many guys on the bubble, uh, bubble. There's like 17 guys that if had an opportunity to win, and if they won, they raced their way. They were locked into the playoffs, and the, the anticipation was massive. And now they go into the playoffs this weekend in Darlington. So nevertheless, I think it's going to be just as, as great for um, SMX. I think that uh, you're starting to see it, it work. It's only going to, in my mind, continue to get better. There's a lot of money up for grabs, as we talked about. Let's thank our sponsors uh, once again, United Motorsports, unitedmotorsports.com. If you are in the uh, Kentucky, Ohio region, they got six locations. Make sure you check them out. Uh, quad lock case. Obviously, we do the quad lock case uh, question of the week. They give away stuff to one lucky winner. So we appreciate you guys. Check them out at uh, quadlockcase.com. And as always, Boxo USA. Make sure you go to uh, boxousa.com. Uh, I love their uh, toolboxes. They got great stuff. And always remember their uh, lifetime guarantee and uh, their warranty uh, package is epic, super easy. All you got to do, take a picture, boom, they'll send it to you. You send the product back and they will get you a replacement. And if you are looking for a promo code on all of these, on Boxo USA, Quadlock, or United Motorsports site-wide, there's a 10% discount and that's uh, Title24 is the uh, promo code. So go on there, save yourself uh, uh, 10%. Now, what we've all been waiting for since RV can't uh, come here, we're going to bring our man, uh, four-time Pro Motocross champion, two-time Monster Energy Supercross champion, Eli Tomac. In. All right, special guest here on Title 24 today, our man, Eli Tomac, uh, four-time MX champ, two-time Supercross champ. Uh, Eli, it's been a while. Good to see you, my man. Everything going good? It is. Thanks for having me on here. Uh, yeah. You know, I... I've been, uh, you know, just rehabbing this Achilles is the best I can. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's been going really well. You know, I'm actually back on a mountain bike now. So I'm, I'm riding my bicycle, um, you know, just trying to gain strength back in this Achilles. And uh, it's always a fine line on how much do you push it uh, for that recovery. But, um, right. you know, you just you try to do what you can. And, and so far, the healing has been, has been uh, you know, right on track. Man, that's fantastic. And I think before before we came on air here, we were we were talking behind the scenes, everyone listening to uh, to our podcast today. Um, we were talking about like, I feel like you go through peaks and valleys, like that's how it was for my ACL. And, and, and Eli was sharing with me kind, kind of the same thing. And is it like I used ET, I used to get scared sometimes like, oh, no, like something's going wrong. Or is this <laughs> is this thing ever going to get better? And then like the mm -hmm. next week, it's just like you make a substantial leap. You're like, okay, there we go. Yeah. Right? And that's how it's been. I've been the same way, man. It's, uh, it's like every couple of days, you know, you, you really fatigue the thing and then it's kind of sore for a day or two. And then once it recovers, right, you, you have that good step forward. And yeah, yeah. I've Do you felt that with, with everything, whether it's in the physical therapy, you know, um, with, with the with the therapist working on it or even on the bicycle when i first started riding my bicycle i was just in the saddle yeah uh like like standing my foot was even too weak to stand on the pedal you know yeah but now i'm like standing really pushing through the bottom of that pedal stroke and, and honestly i think it's one of the best therapies for the achilles because you get you get that whole motion and that whole stretch with it right is uh yeah. is, have you been doing it close to home like your your rehab center is it is it far from your house or no yeah it's like 30 minutes down the road so oh, i mean cool. there's nowhere really really close to us because we're kind of out in the boonies but um yeah not not too bad that's good you um you do you have any timetable have they told you when you get back on the bike or does like are there certain marks that you have to hit or is it like a month like <clears throat> is it time sensitive thing so i have a final checkup september 26th i mm -hmm. think it's a final check checkup um, back with my doctor and I'm hoping then, you know, I get a pretty serious release. I mean, um, yeah, I'm already on my mountain bike, but you know, being on a motorcycle, jumping through, you know, supercross yeah. transitions, that's a whole different load. Mm -hmm. Um, when, when I look at my initial protocol, six months is basically where you can go wide open, zero restrictions, right? 
Got it. Got where it. they say it's as strong as New. your your good side. So <laughs> that would put me November first. So at minimum, I think November first for a Supercross track, and um, anything cool. earlier than that, I, I just I don't know yet. You know. Yeah, yeah. Play, it's play it by doctors. Way. Yeah. That's how it was. Like I was talking to your teammate actually, Romano, and his he he had his ACL done as you know, and some some are like six months. Summer four months, I think. Like yeah. what you're saying, like six months, I think you you can be full gas. For, mm -hmm. I think as an average, at least for ACL. And mm -hmm. uh, Nick, so to like parallel, like mine was four, and then Nick said his was six. And yeah, you know, he had heard four, but he said he got to the four month mark, and he's like, "Dude, there's no shot. I'm ready." So anyway. yeah, and I think like my window is my window in question. It would be that October first to November first, like. Yeah. You know, can I start riding a corner track? Can I do some light moto riding? You know, but then by November one, I would hope for sure. Hey, this is full release. Get on a yeah. super cross track and get to work. I think too, like along the journey of rehab, and you've probably seen this as well as, and even like with your shoulders and stuff. I think the like the further along you get from your initial injury date and rehab, like everything, like from say month four to month five like the, every the strength gets bigger you're, you're building it stronger over and over rather than just trying to get flexion you know full range of mm -hmm. motion so i think the jumps be get you know get get bigger is what is what i mm -hmm. felt what i think you know like mm -hmm. so anyhow do you think so and i don't know if i said this on the broadcast or whatever <clears> even <throat> or even after so with this time off uh, do you feel like it'll help you, you know, going forward. And like, it was kind of a nice break. I know it sucks. It's crappy and all that crap. We know that, but looking mm -hmm. back at that site, you feel like kind of like a, like a release almost or like a, a relief. You're like, okay, man, now I'm excited. I'm not burned out going into next year. I, I feel that, <laughs> but if I could have it all back, dude, I, I wish I would have made it two more weeks, man. I mean, yeah. that was, it was just sick the way it happened. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where I just figured like, uh, because dude, you've been at the pinnacle for so long and, and especially, you know, the mental side of it. And I don't know, maybe you're different, like, but I, I just like, I don't know, man, you've been like on the top these last couple of years mm -hmm. and, and, and winning and winning and winning. It's like, dude, I didn't like, maybe the break might be okay. And maybe he'll get another year out of it because I mean, I'm, I'm motivated as all heck. I'll tell you that to, um, to come back, but I mm -hmm. wasn't, I wasn't really burnt in my opinion. And I, really? uh, that's, really? that's why I, I went for that motocross again. That's why it was in question. You know, it was option at one point. Yeah. And then I, you know, we signed up again. Yep. Um, even though I didn't get to race, but, mm -hmm. uh, all right. Dude, yeah. I, I mean, it's, I, it's, 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 I mean, yeah, I had the summer off and now I'm more motivated, but I was, I was ready to go. That's cool. That's I, yeah. I didn't know that dude. I, I like, man, maybe, maybe this time off will be good. You could spend some time with his kids, his family, do some stuff he's never done before, or, <laughs> or just like, just kind of chill and not have that pressure. Mm -hmm. but, dude, I, I respect that thought. That's, that's good. That's good. I like, mm -hmm. I just, like I said, you've been at it for so long. You've been so successful and just people always up your, you know, just up your rear end, you know, just hounding you. And I just figured that maybe the break would have been nice for you. And then you can come into 2024, 20, just like guns. Blazing. Well, I'll be, I'll be guns blazing. and I'll be fresh. Oh, yeah. and, and, and I will say that, uh, well, you don't realize it's like, like waking up on Sunday mornings now, you're like, oh, like I feel good. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you get so used to just being like totally destroyed from the race weekend on on Saturday, and then like your Sunday's just completely blown out the window, right? Right. I'm like, okay, I do like this part, you know, right. when I'm not racing, and I like I like being fresh on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that that is. But then, yeah, yeah, I could see you're still young though. Well, cool. That's good. That that makes me feel good, dude. And that like. And I don't know if I've asked you this and I taught like, I can keep, I hate to keep saying this about like saying it on the broadcast, but when you, when you left Monster Energy Cowie and then you went to Star Yamaha, I just like, 
a lot changed, I feel like, in your life. You know, you got married, you got kiddos. I mean, like you were a different dude. And like what, what, like what was the change? Dude, you run up front all the time. You're like no worse than third. Like what, yeah. like what, what was that massive change other than the starts? What were the things like maybe we don't know about? Like what, what do you think? Was it just the bike? Was it the team? Was it, I personally feel it was like your, your home life is epic and that just mm -hmm. correlates to better results on the track, but give up, tell yeah. us what it was. Well, it's, it was just the turn of the page, you know, and for me, it was time to, to take that, take that next page, that next step to a, a different team. And, and it ended up being the right fit yeah. straight up, like in, in all areas, um, mm -hmm. just for making the program, you know, work as one. And I, and mentally I was in a great position. So mm -hmm. mentally being at ease, that was huge for me. And, and I felt like I, I had, I wanted more and I wasn't getting it. Right. Right. So then once I made the move to, you know, the monster energy Yamaha star team, yeah, I was able to do the things that, that I felt like would, would work and they ended up working. So, right. um, <clears throat> you know, with the help and the people involved in the team and making those things happen, yeah. but, uh, having that mental ease, you know, just, just, creates better I don't, I don't know like it gave me a better mindset on the line and i raced better you know i got better oh, results 100 yeah. percent. no 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 100 yeah. percent, dude across the board yeah it's just like like oh my gosh and people like ask me off outside everything like dude what what's he doing like what's he so what, like what, what was the change mm -hmm. i'm like dude other than like his his starts are 10 times better so that helps yeah and then like, I mean, he's all, he knows how to ride a dirt bike. That's never seen. He knows how to win championships, but it was just like, so I've always wondered that. I never wanted to bug you on race weekends, but that's cool. That's good for, I, I think that's great for people to know. And it totally, for me, it totally makes sense. And I kind of had that feeling too, like when I left Honda mm -hmm. and when I, when I left there and then I went to Suzuki, it, it was, it was comforting. Those guys hadn't had much success obviously at the 450 level and mm -hmm. I was blown away. And I don't know how this was for you when you got to the star Yamaha monster energy team, but dude, they had so much stuff. They were so prepared. They were like young little kids and they were willing to do anything and everything to give me what I wanted. Was it kind of mm -hmm. the, what I guess what you're saying was a similar thing. It's, it's a similar thing. Same thing happened. And um, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's, yeah. And it was nothing, I mean, it's nothing against, honda you know like yep. dude I, had, I have some great people i'm sure you have you, you're still great friends yep. with, with the guys over at, at cowie but it's yep. just different right when you go somewhere you're like man it feels so good right yeah it was this time it was this time and uh, yeah. i felt like you know that i was at my ceiling at cowie at that at that time yep right hey i had a question for you so you you're you're in a unique situation and you you you've been fortunate enough to raise some of the best guys to to ever do this from a stat standpoint from wins championships um obviously going back to like dunge you race with him everybody knows the how great he is he's a wonderful champion just you know he's super strong um you you've got you know you've got to race chase the younger generation mm -hmm. now you're gonna now you're gonna get to race you're going to get to race jet and from your perspective and because and i want to i'm selfish I'm, i want to know what your 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 answer is going to be what is different what is different from the approach of racing someone like say dunge and and ken to a guy like a guy like a guy like chase like how, how do they race different like and i give you an example so for me racing Stu would be completely mm -hmm. different. Like if I'm running second, you know, behind those guys or, or if I'm, if I'm in front of them or if I'm in front of Reedy, it, it's just it, my, my race strategy is completely different. So what is that like racing someone like Ken or someone like Dunge? Like what, what is that for you? Like a, the, in a generation? I know it's a tough question. Well, going back to um, going, I'll start with like the, Dun the Dunge generation, right? Yeah. So at that time, I felt like I was still kind of, I was still green, you know, and I was still learning. 
and I was more, I would say I, I had more speed, you know, I would, I would do better in qualifying most of the time. Um, yeah. You know, I, I wasn't lacking in that area at all. And, and straight up, my problem was consistency. And that guy just would never budge. No. <laughs> would never throw away a race, you know? No. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but racing them, there's, there's certain guys that you can basically trust on the track and yeah. other guys that you can't. And Dungey, I could totally trust. And I felt like, you know, if I could get out front and sprint away, you know, then I was all good. But at that time, I was making these little dorky mistakes that right. cost me championships, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Looking back to, like, that New York race, totally blew it there, you know. Um, so that was that was racing Dunge. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to it other than the guy would just finish on the podium or get wins every weekend. You yeah. know, it's like, how do you beat that? No, dude, it's – I'm it's with so you. Hard, it's so hard to beat a guy like that. Um, <laughs> it's it you dude it, it's frustrating at least i well i say that i'm i'm not i don't want to put words in your mouth i'm looking at him like a guy like reed because reedy was like that you're like dude he reedy can start dead last and he's going to be on the podium or if he got a top three start i'm like oh boy this is gonna be yep. tough tonight you know and then sometimes you just got to take second because you don't have it depending on the style of track and all that stuff and in it like i would get so fired up in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, dude. And it just drives you nuts because you know he's going to be on there. He's going to be there every single race. Every single race. And I'm thinking back to one of the Daytonas. Um, I remember leading it. I think he fell or I don't know what happened. He was quite a ways back at the beginning of the main event. Yeah. And by the end of, end of the race, you know, he he passes like, I think it was Sealy, like in one of the last corners and gets either a fourth or on the podium. I'm like, I remember that. Was that. Like, that was that was supposed to be my big night to get this big chunk of points, <laughs> and it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Isn't that the craziest thing? You're like racing, and you're like, yeah, you have a decent sized lead. You're like, you see your main guy in points. You're like, oh, dude, this is gonna be good. Yeah, like I'm gonna hammer him tonight. Like in points, <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> it's like, why are you pumped? You won this Daytona Supercross like third year in a row, and you're like, "Well, yeah. damn it! I, I was I could have had a twenty point gap or gain. <laughs> now I'm leaving here with a six point gain. That's nothing." Exactly. So then now I feel like, as time goes on, I think yeah. of Chase, you know, racing Chase, and now I feel like the roles are reversed. I feel like I was the Dungey guy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And maybe Chase was the early Eli. Yeah, you know. Um, and I, and I felt, I knew I could beat those guys on consistency and just knowing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. how to manage a series. Yeah. 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 You um, take what you've learned. You take what you learned and you apply that man. And, and that's where you can beat, beat those rookies unless yeah. you're racing Jet Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you, so, so what, what I've learned and like when coming up, like racing MC, and then after MC, it was going to be Pastrana. Mm -hmm. And then Pastrana, but he had other distractions. You know, he was doing X Games and stuff too. So, I mean, he was awesome on a motorcycle, super fast. But but I'm saying guys that were there basically the entirety of my career. So MC raced. He was super sound, as we know. I mean, the guy's the king of Supercross, 72 wins. He was rock solid, never rode out of his comfort zone, super hard mm -hmm. to beat for obvious reasons. But then the, like the next generation of Reedy was, he was like a version of MC, but mm -hmm. a little bit faster. And then of course, Stu was the next generation that I raced. And so I'd say basically th three generations. And mm -hmm. I noticed that each generation that was coming up, they just, dude, they just, ha they were doing everything a little bit quicker. And so you, you had Dunge, and yep. then add Kenny for a little bit. And yep. then, it's still Kenny. I mean, Kenny's, Kenny's yep. a great Kenny's still there. Yeah. Like, do you feel the same? Like, maybe those guys, like the younger dudes, you had, you had, you had RD. And then now, like, Kenny's faster, can do more, mm -hmm. th better things on a motorcycle. And then now you've raced mm -hmm. Chase all last outdoor. And then, and then Supercross. Like, do you feel like, like there's just little nuances that they do faster? Cause that's how I felt. And that's what it looks like. 
I mean, what do you think? Yeah, like speaking of Ken, I mean, that guy, when he's on, you can't beat his early lap speed. Yeah. So, like, if I would be back in the pack, say, you know, fifth or sixth, and he's out front, you know, I'm saying, uh-oh, at that point, because yeah. uh, he can he can run, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Indy, you know, in that Indy. He did it this year at Indy, yep. right? Wasn't it Indy? Yep. Yeah. And then, um, you know, say racing a guy like Chase, I feel like he's – He's brought more momentum and speed around the whole track. Like he's mm -hmm. he's very fast through the rhythm sections. That's what I had to work on this last year. Yeah, was really driving through the rhythm lanes to, you know, to match that speed. Like that was one area I, I really had to work on. So, right. um, yes, yeah. like you said, every guy has their, you know, it just changes with generation. Yeah, I think. Yeah, for me, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, to watch, to watch you, to watch you, obviously, you know, how Chase races, you know, how Dunn or, uh, uh, Kenny races, but now, you know, talk up, you know, thinking about Jet and how he races. And I'm assuming Hunter's going to be on the 450 also. I'm, I'm just guessing. I mean, I, do you look forward to racing Jet and what, like what he brings? Like the, the, I think it's going to make you even that much better myself personally. I just think where you're at in your career learning from him, little things that he does, you probably go home, work on it. And, and it's, I just think it's an, it's going to be fun for you is what I should say. Like that's how I was with Stu at the end of my career. I'm like, man, I'm going to try to work and see if I can do that yeah. to, to a safe extent. Like, do you look yeah. forward to like, do you look forward to that challenge? Obviously. <laughs> I am looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be an easy, an, an easy task, but uh, no, it was, you know, it was, it was a pleasure watching him, you know, this, this motocross season and, um, just the way he rides a ride, ride, rides a motorcycle is, uh, it's like, it's like pleasant to watch, you know? So, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Do you, That's, so you, dude, like, so you're a gnarly dude, right? Four MX, 450 premier outdoor championships. That is so gnarly, by the way. Um, Going, going undefeated. Like, did you think he would go undefeated? Because you've raced Chase, and you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that was a dog fight last year between you and Chase in the Pro Motocross Championship. Do you feel like? Did you? Were you like? Was was twenty like twenty two and zero? Did you did you even think he could like Jack could do that? No, no, I did. No, nope. nope. I, I didn't. Just and <clears throat> for racing Chase last year, I was like, there's no way that Jet beats him every moto. No way. Yeah, I know. And then, and then when I saw, um, you know, he was he was close to being beat by Kenny too at, at a high point, and yeah. he had a tip over right, made a mistake. I'm like, all right, this guy's that was still pretty early in, this, in the season, but hey, he can make a mistake. Yeah, but he still came back and beat him. Yeah. And then, uh, like I said, to do that in your rookie year just is mind blowing, man. Yeah. I think I, too. I think too. Like, I don't know if you've spent much time with Jet, but I feel like he has a tremendous amount of respect for his his competitors. And, and I could be wrong. I'm not down there on the gate with you guys, you know. But just listening to him, he does. It, it seems like. And I think he was he was bummed like when he he got hurt because like he like dude, you're you're the guy, and he want no no disrespect to Chase, but. I don't know, man. I, I like, I think he wanted to race you, you know, just because you've been the guy since basically he's come into the thing, you, you and Coop, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Fun. I think it'll be, I think myself personally, I think you'll have a lot of fun racing him. I think it'll be a new challenge because you know how everyone else races and that series, you know, we talked about it, you know, you know where Ken's good at, you know, where he struggles yep. at and the same with Chase. I think it, I think it's good. I think it comes at it at a good time for you. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be fun. I, but that 22 and oh, like when you were racing pro motocross, did you ever, like, did you ever set out in the series to try to go undefeated or is it just about championships? <laughs> just about championships. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's like, That's right. <laughs> it's like, I kept telling like on the broadcast, I'm like, dude, yeah, everyone wants to win all the time and win every race. But when you think about going 20, you know, undefeated, 
Dude, there's so many things that can go wrong, right? Like there are so many things. Dude, just first turns, first turns, whatever, mechanicals, lappers, uh, weather. Yeah. It's it's truly unbelievable, you know, yeah. to do that. Yeah. Hey, uh SMX coming up. I know a lot of people were were like, you know, just didn't know what to expect, you know, when the whole when the SMX uh, world championship was announced last year, last October, and then now it coming to fruition and then watching all the points. I know you haven't watched all the races, the outdoor races this year, but um, I had a like I had some stuff written down, like what's your initial th thoughts on how it'll turn out? Like, so for the track layout and the track yeah. speed, like what, like, what do you, what do you anticipate? What do you think it's gonna, gonna be like? Give me, give me like, if you were training for, charlotte coming up how would your track be what would it be like i would treat it like the old monster energy cup oh, okay i think i think i would prepare like that and that's going to be really interesting to see um how they build the jumps and uh you know how steep the track is i think that's the hardest part to get around with motocross suspension mm -hmm. when the steep jumps come into effect right is yeah i think it's going to be more supercross based chassis and then if once you hit that moto high speed section or bumps, you're gonna have to just deal with it. Yeah. Making a hybrid motorcycle is so hard. So I yeah. I would go in there to to the event set up with a supercross chassis and then maybe the thing's just a little bit more relaxed, like with geometry, but your suspension is I think it's gonna be really hard to, you know, make some sort of hybrid. This po the points, do you like and I think everything is made made to be tweaked a little bit and is this being the first year do you how do you see like the points working out and do you like the point system how it's like single points double points triple points maybe give someone an opportunity to make up uh make up some points if they lose some the first round like do you like that or does it not matter to you <clears throat> without pissing anyone it's, off. <laughs> it's, uh, to be honest i have no idea because we haven't done it you know so i don't know how like what happens, you know, when you, when the double and triple points come into play and, and um, it's going to be, I'm just going to sit back and watch really. Like, I don't really have an opinion on it. I'm really interested to see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it does get really tight, you know, between the second and third round and guys are in the pressure cooker and that creates good drama for us. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be, dude, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I think. Yeah. I, mean, I wish obviously, you wish you were there, but we wish you were there also. But uh, like, it's going to be interesting. Coop being back, and then yeah. Jet and Chase. I mean, we we saw what happened there. So that you know that that I think it, it'll be more interesting having the other guys you know lining up like with Ken and Coop and and some other dude. It, it'll be interesting. You know, yeah, I definitely feel like with the the two. Do you like the two moto format? The two twenties plus one. I think so. I, I, I like I. I yeah. like, like, I like it from a fan's perspective, just cause I get mm -hmm. to watch you. I get to watch you guys more. And like, I know, I know it's more laps, but it's just like, it's just fun for me to, to watch you guys and the shorter, the shorter races, like, you know, compared to motocross, I know mm -hmm. it's going to be long for supercross, but I don't know. I think for the fans, it's good. And I think once you guys get used to it, it'll be good. And the chatter's good. Right, another, another. That's option. right, man. You always got that, that at, the, at the end. Is that stack it, that stack it away, big dog? <laughs> that, that's right. No, I, you, I think you, the two. I think the two twenties are good. I personally don't like triple crown format. Yeah. So I, I'm not a fan of three shorter events, but I think two, kind of that 20, 20 minute, little bit in the middle for distance. Yeah, would be pretty cool. Happy medium. Yeah. Are you gonna are you gonna yeah. come to any are you gonna come to any of them? Maybe the last one or no? I'm coming to the last one, so I'll be Sweet. in LA. Yeah. Sweet. Maybe we'll yeah. uh we'll pull some strings and get you in the booth. I'm telling you, dude, you're gonna you'd love it up there. No one will be messing with you. You got the best seat in the house up there, dude. You gotta come <laughs> up there. Um hey, uh, so real quick, I wanna get ET's thoughts and you put your analyst hat on. We're gonna talk two fifty. I wanna make you I don't wanna I'm not gonna put you on the hot seat and talk about guys you're going to be guys you're going to be racing so yeah iron man um if you watch the highlights a little bit mm -hmm. give us your thoughts like 
did you think that uh, Hunter was the favorite coming in, or did you did you have you know higher hopes for a guy like Justin Cooper, or what about what what do you think about Iron Man in general? And we'll go we'll, we'll go on the other stuff. Well, in general, uh, Joe Shimoda's ride was impressive. You know, yeah, this this winning was impressive. So um, there was a little bit of drama with with Hunter there in that I believe it was the second turn. Yeah, uh, with that mistake, but. Um, to be honest, when I think of the 250 class, man, it's like you, you've got like this big bag of marbles and you just shake it around and you throw it on the table. <laughs> Dude, that is so good. You're happy. And, that, I, and like that's where the where the finishing is. I mean, the, that's where they finish outside yeah. of like outside of like three of the, the veterans. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. It's like, hey, do you ever like when you're watching those dudes like – like la even last year, you're like, damn it, man. Why can't the 450 guys be like this? And you just go out there and stack your wins. But that is that is the 250 class. It's just that's your time to fix those growing pains. But that's it. You know, it, you know, you look at these results and you guys got going, you know, 7-1, uh, right. like 3-11. And you're just like, what is going on? It's but, I mean um, – I, do you think do you think it's because those guys are just so close in speed that like the starts are are that important because like that's what I wonder too like they're so close in times and you, and you look at them and to your point you got a dude can go seventh the first moto and he can win the second moto or your guy goes you know like I feel like that that fifth to twelfth place is is just like musical chairs that's what I feel like. Right. So here's a, here's another thing I think about when I think about that is uh -huh. now that all <clears throat> the the base of motocross and supercross now is surrounded by training facilities, right? And you have everyone training together. Everyone sees everything. Yep. And they're all riding together, basically racing each other during the week. And I think that's why a lot of it's is like that in that stage in the 250s is everyone's kind of doing the same thing. And then you have a couple of these outcasts that are, or not outcasts, but um, guys that can step up to the plate or are veterans. But for the majority from that third to 10th to is, is the bag of marbles yeah. because maybe everyone's riding, riding together and training together. I don't know. There's no individuality for sure. And I, yeah. and, and I, I, it's funny. I, I was going to ask you about that because you, you didn't grow up in the facility, riding at a facility. I didn't, I don't think. Guys that are racing now that did not grow up in a facility would be you. I don't think Anderson did, did he? Mm, I don't think so. It's hard no. to say. And Kenny, Kenny didn't, you know, way yep. back when. Yep. And you, you were right, and obviously the Lawrences didn't. But for a while there, up until like the last three years, I'm like, look at the guys that are winning. A lot of the guys that are winning, and when I say winning, like I'm talking multiple championships, right? Mm -hmm. There are guys that – came up just riding by themselves, you know, mm -hmm. what it be you, what, you know, just look, look at the champions. Most of them have come from, you know, just do, doing what they got to do by themselves. They're, they're motivated mm -hmm. to go out there, race the stopwatch, challenge yourself on the practice mm -hmm. track during the week, little stuff, you know, we mm -hmm. all do it. I, I agree with you. I'm not saying that the, I think that the riding facilities are a great place for younger kids who don't maybe have their own private track. I think it, correct. In that regard, I think it's good, like on eighty yes. stuff like that. So yep. you're right. I think there is a there is an element to that, to where all these guys they do the same stuff. I mean, your teammates, for example, they mm -hmm. ride together all the time. You know, mm -hmm. you go up there. Like sometimes I'll go up to the farm and watch, and it's it's fun because it's like watching an outdoor national, right? And they're all relatively close, but mm -hmm. that's what's so gnarly when you go to the race. Some guys get it done, you know. It's yeah, <laughs> bag it's, of marbles, uh, dude. I like that. It's a bag of marbles. Bag of marbles. Hey, real quick. So, what, what what's your what's your thought on your teammate? I got to ask you, Hayden. Like, were you were you surprised after you go back? And this is what I think, dude. You go back to Anaheim because you were there. I mean, I know you guys are in separate semis, but you've seen the dude from when you were coming here last year to where he is now. 
were you surprised at his progression and, and how well he did and the situations that he was in? And you think about the learning curve. Did you, did you anticipate that? I'm surprised of, of both sides of it. Um, first off, I'm surprised that he can handle all of the media the way he's been able to do that and still perform the way he has and progress. Mm -hmm. I thought that was going to be kind of a negative for him on the pro scene. Yeah. I did. But I think when you're born into it and you don't know any different, that that's just his life, right? Yeah. So as long as that doesn't drag him down, man, he's on the right trajectory. And, and he, um, I would say he has it, you know, he has it right now. And for your, you know, for, for his, his rookie season rides and, and uh, getting a couple of wins in this motocross series is, is a big step, you know, being able just to win is a huge step, you know, mm -hmm. at, at this stage. So yeah. I'm very impressed with them. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I did too. I mean, I go back to when you race that futures race, you remember, I think, I don't know, was it, it might've been the second Anaheim you guys are at maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he fell down just over trying. And then what was it like two weeks? He's got later? the heart. He's got the heart, man. He'll just, I feel like he's he's not afraid to stretch those throttle cables at all. No. Like he's no. just <laughs> he goes he goes for it. That's yes, he goes for it. So um, if he can contain that, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And stay on this on this trajectory. He's in a good spot. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. doubt. I it was good. It was good to see. It is pretty amazing too. But you just brought up a great point. Yeah, like when you're born into being on, in that in that spotlight and, and having cameras around you, you, you really don't know any, any different. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, that's probably one of the reasons he's been able to manage that outside noise and, and, and having a camera in your face. But uh, yeah, hey, before I let you go. So last week we were talking about on the podcast and, and normally we, we answer a whole bunch of uh, fan questions and all that fun stuff. And they were asking RV and I like, Hey, what would it take? You know, like, do you, th someone asked if, could, if Eli was racing, could, um, could he, he have beaten Jet, you know, or would Jet have gone 24 and 0? And this is what we said, is mm -hmm. we said that, and, and you don't even need to comment, but we said that we thought for 100% he wouldn't have gone undefeated because there were moments and that to, to, to go down to the checkered flag and to beat a guy like yourself, beat a guy like Jet Lawrence or Ryan Dungey or Ryan Villapoto. I, I say Dungey because you raced him. You, mm -hmm. it's, those, it's those important times, those important laps, as you know, to where you're getting late in the race. The track is starting to deteriorate. Maybe the bike isn't working as good on lap 13 as it was on lap five. And you, you, you have to be there those last, that's those last four laps. And we, we were explaining to our viewers and our listeners about how you are just so rock solid and that we never got to see that, you know, because mm -hmm. Chase always dropped it, you know, mm -hmm. right at those pivotal moments. So kudos to you. We, we thought that for sure you would have, uh, you would have stopped the streak that that had been a lot of fun to, to run. So it's been fun yeah. to watch your progression and, mm -hmm. and that's why you are so strong and it's going to be a lot of fun to, uh, mm -hmm. to watch you do. We're proud of you. Great job. Thank you for coming on today. Um, I'm glad rehab is, is going well. And uh, we're looking forward to watching you, dude. I, I am super pumped for you, really embracing it. You know, I wish that I'm, I'm happy for you to see all the success that you've had, uh, to see how well you're doing with a full blown family and to mm -hmm. embrace it, you know, RV and I talk about it a lot and, and a lot, a lot has changed since our days of racing, but it's, we mm -hmm. often talk like we're like, I don't know that jealous is the right word, but we wish we could have em enjoyed the racing at the later years. Like you are now, it, mm -hmm. you really seem like you're enjoying it, dude. Hey man. I, I mean, I, it's the way it's been here. The last couple of years have been a good ride. So yeah. Um, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Eli. You're a good man. You're a great champion. Glad everything's going well. And we will uh, we'll see you at L.A., my man. That's right. We'll see you out there at L.A.
thank you so much uh, for Eli coming on. That was that was fun. Always love to uh, talk with Eli, man. He's he's a great guy, and uh, it's cool to see his progression. So he was. We're lucky enough that he came on today. Big uh, weekend outside of two wheel sports as far as uh, motocross goes. Uh, motorsports on NBC. There you go. SMX Insider with Wygant and Jason Thomas. That's uh, two p.m. Eastern this Thursday on YouTube. Like always, Saturday. 3 p.m. Eastern, NASCAR Xfinity is at Darlington. They're going to be riding high, wide, and handsome on the USA Channel. Then Sunday, MotoGP, Grand Prix of Cataluna. That place is epic. Been there a couple times at Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Then 3 p.m. Eastern, NTT IndyCar Series in Portland. That's on NBC. I'll be checking that out. And then the chase for the championship starts, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, NASCAR Cup Series. Uh, Darlington, that'll be on USA Network. Make sure you check that out. Those guys, if you haven't watched Darlington, you need to watch it. I mean, they got all this space. Lately, they've been running a little bit lower, but they run right up by that wall. Uh, I've raced there uh, once or twice in the truck series. It is super, super, super tough, uh, that racetrack. But uh, So that's what's on NBC. Make sure you check it out uh, this week. We um, we're knocking it out of park here on Title Twenty Four uh, with the with with talking to Eli Tomac today. I loved how candid he was and and giving us his insight. Um, man, it sounds like he's in a great place. But next week uh, we're gonna have the boys on. We're gonna have uh, Jet and Hunter Lawrence on the two um, uh, two fifty SX champs and uh, the four fifty and two fifty Pro Motocross champ, hogging up all the championships this year but for good reason so we'll have them on with uh myself and my man rv will be back as well so uh that's going to be a lot of fun i i just uh i i can only assume there's going to be a lot of cracking jokes and um there will be some haymakers being thrown um uh on there for sure so uh can't wait to have them on make sure you guys tune into that that will be a lot of fun uh to say the least um before we get going thank you guys everyone to all our partners um, like always, and um, we are on, uh, if you want, make sure you go to uh, Peacock. We are on demand, and then, of course, the Motorsports on NBC's YouTube page. Um, also, the member of the Peacock is uh, on demand, like I said, so uh, always good. And then, of course, Amazon Music. Uh, remember, you can listen to our podcast there. Really excited about that. That's been so cool. Uh, just head over to Amazon.com slash NBC Sports to get all the Peacock shows and listen to us. Uh, we appreciate you. Make sure you uh, keep liking and um, sending your questions and comments. Uh, we love the, uh, love the interaction. A little tougher to do that when we have guests. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's it for today. We appreciate you guys tuning in to Title 24. And uh, we will see you next week. Myself, RV, and the Lawrence Brothers. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.